So we have this generic function f of x, and we're interested in the area under the, this function between the values of a and b. How would we find this area? Well, what you probably heard, what your math teacher probably told you, is to find the integral from a to b of f of x dx. But what does that actually mean? Your math teacher might tell you, oh, think of the Raymond sums. Well, what is, how do you go from the Raymond sums to this integral? No, I think, I think it would really help to see what this integral actually means. So let's uh, think about how to calculate the area under this function, assuming we don't know about the integral. Well, a good place to start is to start drawing rectangles under this function. What is the area of as many rectangles as we can draw under here? So here's two rectangles. I'm sorry, they should be equal width. Should be equal width. With their left corner touching the function. So, okay, so I'm going to write down here area. Area equals... And so what would be the height of this first rectangle? Well, you see the left corner of this rectangle is touching the function. And of course, the left corner is, is above A. So the height would be F of A. The width, let's just create a variable W to represent width here, just a generic variable. And so I didn't draw it right, but all these should have a width of W, if that makes sense. So, so the first rectangle would be W times f of a. And we're going to add the second rectangle, which will be w, but this time we're not looking at the point a, we're looking at the point a plus w. This point right here, a plus w. So the second one will be w plus f of a plus w. And then we'll keep adding. The next one will be w times f of a plus 2w. And the last one here, our last rectangle, if I were to draw it in, would be up here. And you see this point right here would be B minus W. So this last rectangle will have a width of W. I'm sorry, I should draw. It will be a dot, dot, dot plus F of plus W times F of B minus w. B minus w there, I didn't draw it right, but so that's really, and then what we're doing here is we're, with the integral we're trying to have as many of these rectangles as possible, so we're really taking the limit as w approaches zero, as this width value, of these, uh, these rectangles here under this curve will approach zero, meaning that we have as many rectangles as possible under this curve meaning that we get as most accurate approximation of the area under this curve as, as possible. And so this simple statement, this infinite series, this limit of an infinite series, all just comes out to equal the integral from a to b of f of x dx. These are the same exact thing. And I think once you understand this underlying rule, Rather than just memorizing formulas, as you move into more difficult integration topics such as solids of revolution, you'll find them much, much easier because now this, this underlying rule of integrals that I basically came up myself, I'm sure a lot of other people have thought of it, but it applies through all, all integrals. Okay. So as promised, here we have a more complicated situation. So here we have two functions, g of y and f of y, and as you can see, they are both solved for x. And we are interested in the area between f of y and g of y looking toward the y-axis. So how do you find this? So let's like, like before, let's pretend we don't know the integral symbol and we just want to look at how do we find this using rectangles. So what would these rectangles look like? So let's draw, the first rectangle, if we were to draw, it would look something like this. And let's just say its width is W. So right here, the area of this shape, area is equal to, I'm gonna, so the area would be the first rectangle has a width of W. And then what's the height of this first rectangle? 
Well, like I said, we're looking at the difference between f of y and g of y. So this is a big rectangle here. What we're actually interested in, so we're interested in this, this rectangle here that represents the difference in the areas of the two uh, shapes. So actually, I forgot to label the two points here on our, our interval here. So the first, let's call the first value, whoa. Let's call the first value here C and the second value up here D as a starting point and the ending point of our interval. So back to this rectangle. So then the height of the big rectangle would be F of C, right? And then the smaller rectangle, the height would be G of C. So we know the width of our rectangle is W, and then we know that the height of the rectangle is F of C minus, so we subtract the height of the big rectangle minus the height of the little rectangle. And the little rectangle has a height of G of C. And that will give us this difference rectangle up there. Okay, so that's one rectangle. Add second rectangle. So we were to draw in the second rectangle. Its width is also W. So the width of the second rectangle is W. What is the height of the second rectangle? Well, once again, we're looking for the difference from the two, the big and the little rectangle, to get that difference rectangle. Um, but this time, we're not looking at at the point y point c. We're looking at the y coordinate c plus w. So it should be w times f of c plus w minus g of c plus w. And so I'm running out of space here, but lastly, if you were to add all these rectangles up, and there will be plenty of rectangles, the last rectangle you would get to, let me draw on the last rectangle here. So since the right corner is touching for all of these, it should be stay consistent. So the width of the last one will be W. And since the right corner is touching, so the width is W, since the right corner is touching, the height of this difference rectangle we're interested in will be off this point right here and that point so it would be f of that point which is d minus w minus g of d minus w okay and then of course we're taking the limit here as w approaches zero so we have infinitely many rectangles and so this whole statement here is equal to this crazy symbol, the integral from C to D of F of C minus G of C, sorry, F of X minus, or F of Y, wow, F of Y minus G of Y dy. And so the important thing to notice is as you keep using this underlying understanding of the integral, the only thing that will ever change is this operation you're performing on the variable in the middle, that f of whatever. Everything else will be constant.